welcome to the show, Mr. Bob Chapman. Am I here? <laughs> yes, sir. We're gonna we've got a, we're gonna have a little echo here. We're working on all of it. We're we're you're, we're finally on the air with you. Well, I think that's great, and uh, I think a uh, good shot, U.S. government. Good but, shot. Uh, you didn't do it this time. Amen. Anyway, Man, um, I, Go ahead, Mr. Hello. Chairman. I'll, I'll, I've got a couple of questions. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, please. So, uh, I, uh, the blog talk, uh, the um, the Wind Talkers Radio Network got the original introduction at the beginning of the show. And for those of you out there that missed the original introduction, it was about the, the massive uh, Gulf oil spill that is the size of the state of Maine. And the five states that are involved here, Mr. Chapman, as you know, you're very well educated, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Alabama, and uh, Florida, are all ha have economic problems as we stand now with this oil spill and the possibility of the evacuation of major cities around the Gulf. Uh, more uh, uh, catastrophe is about to hit. And, Mr. Chapman, uh, if some idiot were to go out there and set this thing on fire, the catastrophic event that will hit the world is going to just mind-boggle anybody's total imagination. Over 15 oil, uh, oil tankers the size of the Va Vasquez, uh, the, Val Val the, the USS Valdez, I think that's it, that, that, uh, that was up in Alaska, 15 oil tankers that size are spewing into the Gulf of Mexico every three days, ladies and gentlemen. And out there, Dr. Mike Castle, uh, an inventor, has a remedy for this, has had the remedy for over 14 years preparing for this catastrophic event, and nobody's talking to him, just like nobody's talking to Mr. Bob Chapman about the financial. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know, Mr. Bob Chapman's got the truth out there, and some of you out there that want to know what's going on, you've got to call into the show, 347-308-8047. That's 347-308-8047. And the first question comes right off the top. Uh, please ask Mr. Chapman uh, about uh, the uh, – the, uh, where's that? The uh, – deleveraging that happened in 2008. Is that what we're seeing with the gold stocks today? Absolutely not. And uh, you, what you're seeing is uh, the uh, big firms in Wall Street and hedge funds have been shorting the producing gold shares, and they've been doing it now for about eight months. And if you check the figures like I do every week, you would see what they're doing. Now, I want to add something to this, saying that you asked this. Right now, the market is being driven down. It's down 376 points today. And that's been going on for several days. And the commodities are getting hit very hard. The only thing that's gone up is treasury paper. And, of course, the gold and the silver prices are down about 50 or $60, and the stocks are out. Now, the reason for this, at least that, well, that, this is what I think, is the legislation that's hanging in the Senate. The U.S. government and Wall Street hedge funds do not want any regulation of derivatives. They don't want a reintroduction of the Glass-Steagall Act that separates brokerage and insurance from banking. They don't want the Federal Reserve to have any meaningful audit. And they don't want the government to stop what is called front-running flash trading and naked shorting. And that's why this market is being, all these markets are being driven down because Congress, particularly the Senate, has been told, if you don't do what we tell you to do, we're going to destroy the economy. Well, I get news for them. The economy is going to get destroyed anyway. So at least you know now why everything's gone down. Gold is held up very, gold and silver are held up very, very well 
over the last four days. And it's a mitigating factor for gold and silver, but particularly gold, is on Tuesday, the monthly gold long option expiration comes. And what the commercials, which are the banks, who are working for the government, want to do is knock the price of gold down below $1,200 an ounce, which they've done, because that's where most of the call options were. And so they've accomplished that. And we're getting a little trailing off behind it because of the shorting in the shares as well as the gold and silver by your government. And so that's what's going on out there. And this is not natural, it's unnatural. And what they don't realize is that there's big trouble coming. You saw the elections that have gone off in the last two months, and all the incumbents have lost. And I expect that will continue in Arizona when they get rid of that senator they've got there in this primary, so to speak. And uh, yesterday, Rand Paul won in Kentucky. Uh, he has a chance to get the Senate seat in Kentucky. He's Ron Paul's son, who's never been in politics before. Uh, people want to change, and it's up to you to get rid of almost every incumbent. Because these are the people who are being paid off by Wall Street and banking, the Illuminati, to control your lives, to send you off onto senseless wars, to bankrupt our country. That's what's going on. This doesn't know any politics. It's no party. It's all about destroying America and to force them to accept world government and the world as well. And this is really what's going on out there. And seeing I've got the floor for a minute, I got a, a piece of information from one of my investigative people who tell me, and he's in New York City, he has told me that um, the the um, there's a large, eminent law firm in New York City that is bringing a class action lawsuit against J.P. Morgan for manipulating the silver price. And there's going to be other suits like it. And what Wall Street fears, and I know this because I worked there for 28 years, Here is class action lawsuits because they can't stop them. And so there's going to be some hells a popping going on very shortly on Wall Street, so get ready for it. There's also other lawsuits coming against J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, Citigroup for mortgage and municipal bond fraud and a number of other items. And this is going to turn Wall Street upside down, and it should be turned outside, upside down because there are a bunch of crooks. And I know. I've been there. I've done that. And I own my own firm for a long time. So go ahead, Drew. What's that? Uh, i got a question from Alan in Mexico. He says, uh, Mr. Ch uh, hello, Mr. Chapman. Uh, are Mexican pesos in uh, a good choice for fractional pieces? Uh, re referencing the Mexican peso gold coins, if so, would you recommend the 2, the 2.5, the 5, the 10, uh, the 20, or the 50 uh, for a large stash? Well, first of all, there's one-tenth ounce coins. I don't know if you knew that or not. And uh, quite frankly, I just picked up some of them recently. Not many, because they're hard to find. Uh, I think I had about maybe 50 of them or something like that. But all those fractional pieces, and they sell very close to uh, to the spot price. Uh, the peso and the Krugerrand are very inexpensive. And uh, they're, they're great coins. In fact, uh, before 1971, uh, people would smuggle bullion coins into the United States. And the two favorites were the Mexican peso series as well as um, uh, the um, 
Austro-Hungarian uh, coins as well. You don't hear much about them anymore. But the Austro-Hungarian coins and the Mexican coins were the first coins to be legally admitted into the United States in 1971 after the law changed. And uh, so they used to be very popular coins. In fact, uh, Judy's got a... Uh, a uh, Austro Austro-Hungarian 100 set with a solid gold background, surrounded by I don't know maybe a dozen uh, cut diamonds. It's a beautiful piece. It's rather heavy, and uh, <laughs> nowadays it's it's hard to wear something like that around. I have to carry my 45 if I wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> 